What is going on guys? Welcome to the first tutorial in the series that I've been waiting for so long to teach you guys. This is going to be my favorite series of all time by far. Because in this series, we're going to be learning how to create games in Java. Now, this is the reason I've been teaching you guys Java. And these tutorials are going to start out... Um, pretty intermediate and kind of advanced so if you don't know Java I recommend actually you need to go check out my Java tutorials it's like one through it's like an 80 part series and once you're good with that you're ready to move on to this next step how to create games in Java now what we're going to be creating is full screen games such as like um games kind of like Super Mario Brothers and then later we're going to be getting into 3D games and this is like first person shooters like well they aren't going to they aren't going to look as cool as modern warfares and stuff but um if you you'll get the point of that how to use 3D graphics to interact with a Java 3D class and create 3D games in Java and this is going to be awesome. I'm going to give you guys a bunch of tutorials, probably over a hundred tutorials on this. And by the end, you're going to be an awesome Java game developer. So the first thing that we need to learn is, aside from all the basics that you guys already should know, is something called threads. Now, what a thread is on your computer is it allows you to do two tasks at once so instead of having all your tasks in a row and this would be like a single line at the DMV it can go kinda of slow and to make it easier Java made something called threads what a thread would be is to take that line at the DMV and split it up into three separate lines so that you can get three things running at the same time and I said three but it's actually as many as your your computer can handle so that way your whole computer program goes faster and it can do multiple tasks at the same time so if you're saying alright I know what a thread is now it lets you do two things at once so how exactly do you create a thread well, in order to create a thread, the most common way, or at least what we're going to be doing, is you need to implement, A P L E, implement runnable. And what this means, this runnable interface right here, it takes a method called the run. And there's only one method in the runnable uh, class and this is the run method so whenever we create our thread the method run and that's what you're going to be seeing right here uh, right here the type apple must implement the inherited abstract method runnable run so whenever whenever you create a thread this method run is automatically gonna run so if you had something called print out hello world and you started your thread without even calling this run method it's going to print out hello world so let's go ahead and do some stuff to our apple class that's where we're going we're gonna to be treating this as a thread class now let's go ahead and make a string variable called name um, an integer variable called time and this is going to be the length this is going to be the name of your thread, the length of time it pauses pretty much and just a random r and set this equal to new random and if you can't see be, before I already imported the random class right here so we can use random numbers and this is going to be just for demonstration of the uh, threads so now let's go ahead and make a constructor public apple or whatever you name your class and for my argument I'm going to take the name of the thread and we're going to be naming it later on but 
let's just go ahead and set the name equal to s and this is going to be the parameter we passed in and let's also set that time and set this equal to r or whatever you named your random object next int and put like 999 so the time is going to be anywhere in milliseconds between pretty much zero time and one second this is milliseconds a thousand is a second but let's just go ahead and put 999 because it looks way cooler so now that we got our constructor let's go ahead and implement that run method so let's go public void run this isn't going to take any parameters and again like I said whenever we start our thread this is a code that's automatically going to run so we don't need to call this method explicitly so let's go ahead and try and let's just go ahead and catch everything get this out of the way catch if I can type right exception E and we won't handle it because we're lazy so what do we want to try to do as soon as we start our thread go ahead and system out actually we don't need to indent that indenting is for suckers so print f actually you probably should I just don't have enough room print f put the name of the thread which is percent s is sleeping for percent d which would be the time and let's go ahead and move to a new line I want to do it right there that would probably be helpful and just put name time make sure we don't get any errors so the first thing it's going to do is print out a little statement the name of the thread is sleeping for and give you the time well that statement's all nice and pretty but we actually need to um make good on our promise so let's go ahead and put thread which is a thread the current thread and put sleep and for our time the sleep parameter is how long do you want to sleep for so if you put this 1000 it will sleep for one second if you put 5000 it will sleep for five seconds but since we want each of these threads to sleep randomly we're going to go ahead and put time here and this is going to give us a random number <coughs> uh, whooping cough from zero to one second so each of these threads whenever we create it it's going to sleep randomly for zero to a second and this is just to demonstrate a point in my next tutorial and now after it's done sleeping let's just put system out print f and for print app, let's just go ahead and what do we want to write? Um, let's just put the name of thread. S is done. And for our arguments, let's just put name. So now what we have is pretty much a run method. And actually, I'm going to... Um, be explaining all this and finishing it up in the next tutorial so I know this doesn't look like much but I need to teach you guys about threads because they are used a ton in games for stuff like um, if you have a lot of different things going on at once pretty much whenever you build a huge program you want to use threads so it can run more effectively and in the next tutorial, I'm going to be clearing all this up for you, and we are finally getting started on game development. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to check out the next tutorial, and I will see you then.